South Barul is part of the majestic chain of mountains that run down the southwest of the island, forming dramatic cliffs above the sea. Kronk de Irile is the southernmost peak, and next to it, dominating the whole of the south of the island, is South Barul. The climb up gradually reveals a stunning view of the surrounding lands on a clear day. The mist is always unpredictable and can come in at any moment. Legend has it that Mananan lived on this summit and his cloak of mist protected the island from invaders. But there was something else offering protection from invaders up here, something most unexpected. Well, here we are, 483 metres above sea level, and the views are spectacular. Down there is Glen Russian, and over there is Peel. On the other side of the summit, you can see from Snowdonia in Wales to Cumbria in England. And the whole of the south of the Isle of Man is laid out below like a map. But don't be distracted by the view. There's something much more remarkable right under your feet, even though it's not immediately obvious. What perhaps you don't realise when you first come up here is that there were once 80 thatched houses huddled together on the summit. Some two and a half thousand years ago, there was a whole community living up here. If you look carefully in the grass, you can still see the depressions where the huts once stood. And although this area was excavated back in the 1960s by Manx archaeologist Peter Gelling, no one is entirely sure for how long the people lived here, or perhaps more intriguingly, why they chose the summit of South Baru. The larger ones are on the more sheltered side of the hilltop, but there are just as many on the other. The doorways are facing east, away from the prevailing wind and each hut was found to have a central hearth with a drain running out through the door. Of course, we can't tell from these hollows exactly what the houses look like, but reconstructions based on sites of the same period elsewhere in Britain would suggest that they had earthen walls with thatched roofs. The bigger ones were about five and a half metres across, and all of them had a central hearth. Material from one of these hearths was carbon dated and it produced a date of 500 BC, which surprised everyone because they weren't expecting it to be that early. That means that people were living up here at least two and a half thousand years ago and probably before that. If we look at the plan of the huts made after the dig, we can see the layout of the community, but we can also see something else. It seems the huts were enclosed by two circles, and these turn out to be the remains of some sort of stone ramparts. Looking from the air, the line of the outer rampart is clearly visible, and inside you can see the faint line of the inner rampart and some of the depressions where the huts once were. The line of the inner rampart is more difficult to see because it's thought it's much earlier and stones were taken from it to build the outer one. This is the faint line of the inner rampart and there's quite a gap between this and the outer one which is really worth looking at. At first sight, the outer rampart looks like a pile of old stones covered with heather, with no particular purpose. In fact, it provides a useful footpath right round the shoulder of the summit. But walk a short distance and you come across a clue to what this might have once looked like. During the dig in the 1960s, Peter Gelling cleared away a lot of this stone until he came across this remarkable feature hidden inside the rubble it's actually a perfectly built dry stone wall. This surprisingly skilled piece of stone walling hidden deep inside the massive pile of stones indicates perhaps that this area didn't always look like this. 
Now the point is that what looks like a great mound of random stones is in fact the remains of a great wall that once stood here. 2,000 years ago there was a massive rampart that ran round the top of the hill and if you could take these stones and lift them up and put them back to where they once were it would be a truly impressive sight. It's impossible to say precisely what the rampart would have looked like, how it was capped or whether there was a high level walk around its inner side but just lifting these stones up from where they have fallen would produce a very impressive structure. You can walk right round the remains of the rampart and what strikes you is that the stones are massive and there must be long thousands of them, though now they're nearly all covered by the heather. There's no obvious quarry nearby, so we don't know how far they had to be carried, but using basic tools like stone axes and bronze chisels means it would have been an enormous task to prepare all this stone and carry it to the summit. Something else was found nearby as well, which is even more intriguing. Along the inner rampart here, the archaeologists found a series of irregular post holes, and that's led some of them to speculate that there might have been a chevaux de frise here. That's a series of stakes set at irregular angles to deter an attack. If this really did exist, it seems at some stage to have been abandoned, perhaps in favour of the grand outer rampart. The whole site would have been hugely impressive, the huddle of huts surrounded by the great stone wall, though it's unlikely that all the huts were built and occupied at the same time. It's more likely some were abandoned over time and new ones built next to them. Pottery that was found in the excavated huts indicated that the fort was most probably occupied by local people and not by invaders who had marched in and taken over. So there's not much more useful we can say about why people wanted to live up here in the Bronze Age. Were they behind this great rampart because they were being attacked by other tribes on the island? Or were they being protected from people they could see landing on the beaches down there? And what about the practicalities of living up here? It's cold, it's windblown, there's no water. There isn't even anywhere to grow food. What seems obvious to me though, given this inhospitable location and the huge effort that must have gone into building this rampart, is that it must have been something very serious that made people leave the lowlands down there and come and live up here in such inhospitable circumstances. Thank you.